European parliaments come in many shapes and sizes, and if you're new to the world of politics, you likely don't understand what any of those colors mean. This is extra confusing if you're from a system like the United States, where the political spectrum is pretty clear cut between the party that you agree with and the satanic antichrist of hell that is the other side. Well, even though every country has their own parties and there's lots and lots of history attached, I'll try my best at generalizing what the seven main political parties in generic European country X might look like. Okay, let's meet the team. First up is the Workers' Party. It used to be quite radical in its early years, when, as it says in the name, it was founded to represent the poor oppressed workers in the early years of industrialization. But over time it's turned from street barricade to moderate, making it the dominant force of the center-left. Its main goal is to create a society of solidarity, so it doesn't shy away from redistributing money from the wealthy to the ones in need. But it also likes capitalism and leaves it to do its good thing so long as normal worker guy here is satisfied. On the center right we find the People's Party. It likes to think of itself as much more careful and rational than the Workers' Party listening to both workers and employers. Although we all know who's got the money, am I right? Morally and culturally, it's definitely more conservative, and occasionally has a hard time with change. But while it's also quite conservative when it comes to economic questions, it's not strictly opposed to social programs, as its roots are in the benevolent Christian doctrine. The Liberals In North America, the term liberal has become almost synonymous with the left wing of politics, which is not the case in large parts of Europe. See, the original meaning of liberal is just free. Free from taxes, free from the state, free from boundaries. The government should only be as big as it needs to be, competition is what drives us, and people should only be rewarded for effort and hard work, the Liberal Party said. What? Owning stocks is hard work. The Greens are pretty self-explanatory. For them, fighting climate change is goal numero uno, that means number one, and they've got just the plan on how to do it. Sure, most other parties have also realized that you can't ignore a burning planet forever, and decided to roll out their own plans. But the Greens were here first, which means their plan's the best. Or is it? Usually they're also pretty big on LGBTQ plus issues and pacifist in their nature. Hmm, nature. But just like with all the parties mentioned here, there are large differences between all the green parties across the continent, ranging from far-left eco-socialists to moderate right-wing ecologists. So before we finally come to the political fringes, we'll have to talk about conservatism again. As it turns out, the People's Party isn't the only one with a patent on... conservatism. Enter the National Conservatives! They are here, they are c here, and they're tough on crime. They don't particularly like the EU and love to handle things at home, as it should be, because we're... When talking about the left in Europe, you have to once again consider that there are loads of different interpretations of what they can mean, and some are more radical than others. Like, some still want to brutally overthrow the current system and establish a socialist society once they're in power, while others just say that their brothers over at the Workers' Party don't go far enough with their demands. In any case, they derive their ideology from anti-capitalist thinkers, which means they usually aim for a very big state, equality through redistribution, and often raise their voice the loudest when the poor are getting poorer. It's just, you know, the fringe. And lastly on our list, I'm sure you've already heard of them, we have the right-wing populists. Ever since the refugee situation following the war in Syria in 2015, they've been gaining in popularity, catching on not only with concerned voters, but also with people who feel broadly disappointed by the other mainstream parties. They're often being accused of fear-mongering, falsification of history and emotionalizing issues instead of rationalizing them. However, from their point of view, they're just protecting national interests in a dangerous, progressively globalized world, and that's fine, I guess. So long as the fringe doesn't come to get you. And that's our team, the basic profiles of our main political players. Now, of course, in real life, they aren't as clear-cut as I made them out to be. And I could have also touched on regional parties, farmers' parties, commies, literal Nazis, religious parties, minority parties, single-issue parties, joke parties... Okay, okay, I got it! You guys have a lot of parties, cool. But come on, be serious. Aren't they also just one big right-wing versus one big left-wing? Well... No... question mark? Don't get me wrong. The left-right spectrum is important, and it's a good indicator for a party's economic policies, but it's not the default line of conflict. Like, if there's one thing you gotta understand about multi-party systems, it's this. There are always more than two sides. Every party has their own plan on everything, be it on environmental protection, abortion, working hours, foreign policy, you name it. And that potentially results in different teams depending on the subject. At the end of the day, they are all competing against one another, so the left-right thing is there and necessary, but it's noticeably less important than in the US. Got any more questions? Yeah, a couple actually. 